Are we live? I think we're live. We're the weirdest live thing ever. Hey, uh, hey guys. Um, this is a different kind of uh, episode Something today. Completely Something completely different. Yes. So uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear us very well. Um, the cam, the microphone's way back there. So we're going to try to speak loud so you can hear us. But if you can't, sorry. Um, welcome to Outlining with Scott. Keystroke Meme Outlining, episode one. Episode one. First and last, probably. <laughs> so, this is going to be a train wreck. It's going to almost promise horrible it. Horrible disaster. What you really need to see is behind the camera here, we have this kind of creative type and technology. Next, I don't really understand. It's like magic to me. I'm going to do like but a, yeah, uh, so. you, while you describe what we're doing, I'm going to kind right. of <clears throat> video what we have going on. All here. right, yeah. So we'll do that. We'll put that up there. So um, one, I'm, I'm probably going to wind up looking at the, the screen here, it's like our monitor. So if I'm not looking at the camera, I apologize. So what we're doing today, um, oh, probably last week, if you're a writer, you have every now and then those kind of meltdown-ish type areas where I was sharing some of my angst with Josh. And he's like, well, we should, we should do an outline um, and get through some of these issues. So here's the backstory. This is gonna, today we're going to outline episode seven of um, Dark Landing. The episode seven is titled, working title, Race to the Finish. And I'll explain why in just one second. So I have some ideas on it. And Josh is going to take me through some outlining process. Now, as we do our technology here, our camera is going to focus and unfocus a little bit. And we're going to put a screen, some screenshots in there to handle what we're actually writing on the board if you can't read it during, during this. dumb camera. Come on. Right. So somebody slap our camera. Thank you very much. That's worse. There it goes. Yeah, awesome. So here's how the Dark Landing stories start. Um, Craig and I obviously talk about this series a bunch, and we go through some things, and like I'll surprise him with stuff like, hey, by the way, I just wrote this character that reminds me of Haas from Bonanza, and he's going to do some crazy stuff. He's like, that's awesome. Tell me more. And we write, and we do some things. So for this one, for episode seven, Wall's working on five, and he's working on six, because we got this the schedule thing. We, got it. we have a production line. <laughs> Um, I, he, I say anything that you really want to see or sparks your imagination for um, episode seven. And he says, well, I'm thinking uh, the quiet man, the horse race from the quiet man. Now, I'm a big John Wayne fan. You're a John Wayne fan, right? But I hadn't seen the quiet man. So I had to go watch that. Um, Jen and I, we went and watched that. It was a great movie. And I watched that race. And it's not going to be just like that, but that's like a spark. So there's going to be some kind of race, hence the title, Race to the Finish. So if you want to kind of get us set up here, I'll go through what I have already started on that line as we, as you ask me questions. Yeah. So like what I usually do when I outline, and uh, this is going to be kind of a, a brief overview of the story because I, I like to go in depth when we outline, but I also like to know the key points, where the characters are going, what they're doing, so that when I sit down and write, I'm not lost. So uh, we're going to try to utilize the board in a uh, coherent organized fashion but if you know anything about us shenanigans might not happen right so what i like to do is because and and this is different for scott's book than it is for regular books because these are novellas so they're very short they're very to the point not like a novel where you have a whole bunch of subplots so we have one plot and we're going to start out with that idea and then we're going to figure out which characters are going to um going to uh, work us towards that idea and how they work together. So what is the main idea, the main part point of Race to Finish? What's okay, it? so if you read the first six episodes, you know some of my characters. We'll line them out here. And there are some tensions. Thaddeus Fry is the sheriff. Some readers think that he's going to maybe get together with a woman called Dixie, maybe Shantae. But we'll start with Thaddeus Fry, just, or you put Sheriff with Thad, T-H-A-D, or Fry, Sheriff Fry. Um, and then Shantae, and it's S-H-A-U-N-T-E, is Shantae. And she's, her title, her work title is The Company Man. Okay. So when I, if I say The Company Man, I mean her. I know it's confusing. It's lots of fun with that. <laughs> um, and you have Dixie, who's the madam at the mother load. Okay. Um, you're going to have Mast, Jotham, M-A-S-T. You put Mast. Okay. He is the Unglock deputy of Sheriff Fry, of Sheriff Fry. Um, he's an important character. Sledge, just like the sledgehammer. 
Now, Sledge is one of my favorite characters um, that, that is in an earlier episode, but I didn't want to have too many characters, so he, he and some other characters left in, in some of the earlier episodes, but he's back. So Sledge is back. Spoilers! Spoilers! Sledge is back, um, and I got some notes. So, <clears throat> so we're getting started. That's our that's our main characters. Oh, and there's and he's unnamed. Hot shot. Oh. Uh, is that unnamed? Is that the he's name? Un- he's using? unknown. He's a he's like a speeder racer or something. Okay. Unknown racer. Right. And he's so those are our characters. Right. So what's what's the the plot. The plot. What's the um, what's the? I thought you were going to tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what no. do you have envisioned that you want to see happen with this story? Okay. So the first thing um, that I worked on this morning, and this is my my tablet. I do use Scrivener. I have it set up here, and I can look at my note cards on there a little bit. Um, so obviously, I want this this uh, race to the finish. Um, and there's this tension. So <clears throat> what I have so far is. Sheriff Fry and his deputy Mass in the first scene are going to see some sort of speeder race and they conflict whether they should shut it down or not. But um, so why are they shutting it down? Is there illegal gambling going well, on? I don't know. It's dangerous. I mean, you're not supposed to do anything that's going to harm the workers of the company and all things like that. So he's probably not going to shut it down. But and there's there's going to be gambling. There there's a uh, criminal enterprise. I wrote down dangerous race. Dangerous see. race. Key, an element. So. <clears throat> So there, that's just to introduce that there is going to be this race. So it's, something's going to happen. Um, now, the unknown racer is going to come. And the only thing I know about him so far is that he went to school with Shantae at a private school a long time ago. So, And he was a senior, and she was a freshman, and she had a crush on him. And so this is going to create conflict between Fry and Shantae and everybody. Okay. Right. So they used to go to school. So, so they're going to go to the race. That so the the story is going to take place at the racetrack. So do you have? Oh, yeah. So do you have a a final uh, conflict? Like what what's happening in the story? So they're well, going to the racetrack, but what's the uh, the the idea that you have that's going to make the story okay. significant? I, I like to divide my stories into four parts. Okay. So by the end of the first part, which is twenty five percent. Let's see what I have here. I have basically, let me see if I can get my notes out here on this one. And for those of you that don't know, Dark Landing is 12 episodes, but they're all individual episodes. So it's kind of like a TV series. Um, there is some connectivity to the episodes and there's some some follow through from previous episodes. But every story is uh, its self-contained unit. So it's not going to carry over to the other stories, that particular plot point. So what we're working here is just one story that is just self-contained in this right. book. It's an episodic story. I'll give you some of that backstory. So um, the first door, the first point in our return where Fry is going to have to commit to the story is going to be where they're going to have this race. He's thinking about shutting it down. Um, but this hotshot character isn't introduced until the beginning of that first quarter of the book. And there's going to be a scene where Sheriff Fry gets this guy acting inappropriately with some of the girls from the mother load. Maybe he's a bit of a jerk, set up as a bad guy. And of course, Shantae doesn't believe. Is him. that is that at the, the right. that's at the mother load at the bar? Right. Okay. It's the saloon slash brothel place. Okay. Bar. <clears throat> so the conflict in this story, as I envision it, is going to be that Shantae, Shantae doesn't like, Fry's trying to convince her that this is a bad guy. And she, of course, doesn't believe him. So, he was going to shut down this race, but now he's going to have to be in the race. He's going to have to show this guy as a chump. So you're starting out the story with Fry at the bar. I'm going to get my paper towel here because we're going to have to do a little <laughs> bit of a race. All right. This is where you take Josh and he's organized and in my brain that goes all over the place. So, so we're first... setting up character here. So we have a bar scene with Fry and the unknown racer. And the unknown racer is having... So an unknown racer basically gets is like just being a drunken asshole with some of the girls, um, and of course then w- when he can't use them as witnesses because they're all going to deny it because they were because they're and Shantae and the racer they have a thing going on. Well, she sorry that's the coffee, the coffee maker. maker. <laughs> Coffee's she, done. She, she they don't 
um, so there's this almost love interest between Fry and Shantae, but she's younger. Yeah. And so this guy shows up and it's somebody that she's from her past. And he was a senior when she was an impressionable freshman and he was like the big school jock. He's got to be a famous speed eraser or whatever. And now all of a sudden he shows up and she's got googly eyes and Fry sees through him immediately. And it's not just because he's jealous. So, so do we need to have a scene that sets that up? So we have mm -hmm. a bar scene here where the racer is uh, basically like being a kind of a, a womanizer, right. right? And Fry sees this and this sets off warning right. bells in him. So we need to have a scene that establishes Shantae and the racer right. have a previous relationship, right? Right. So we need to do that before this. Yeah. So okay. So we come down here and so that whenever they get there, she's going to know that he gets there. So maybe they're having a discussion about something that happened in a previous book and she gets notification that this guy's on the list to, to arrive at dark landing. What I want to have is kind of from, from, um, from Emma's interview we just did kind of the idea of the bigger, the bad and the bigger bad. Yeah. This is not for a person, but so what I imagine is the very first thing is Fry and Mass watching this race and it's not a big deal. Um, but then this guy shows up in races or something and he takes off his helmet and Shantae sees him and she's all okay good so he steps off the racetrack obviously smoked everybody you know has the <clears throat> the moment where she's like wow look at this guy i remember him so we're at the track so like first small race then you have the big batter race and then you have the big conference showdown race or whatever so or we'll just call him hot down. shot now yeah call him hot shot hot shot wins race Shantae recognizes him. Right. Uh, and says, oh, we were boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever. Right. And this kind of sets him off because they've got kind of a... He's like, I don't like that guy. Immediate, yeah. immediate tension between Fry and Hotshot. So I'm going to write girlfriend, boyfriend, past. Fry doesn't like this. No. Okay, so... That's establishing. That's our establishing scene right here at the track. Right. So we're gonna go. Track. We're gonna go uh, at the track to the bar scene, probably. Um, so <clears throat> I have that quite a bit later. So I have in between there. I have, and I'll just throw this out here. I have a scene where Dixie and Sledge run off together because Sle Sledge really likes Dixie, but she likes Fry. It sounds like a YA novel, but it's not. <laughs> it is doing pretty good in juvenile or in a young adult, but um, but so Sledge and Dixie are gonna go off for for something else. I don't know, and that's not really important. I can fill that in, but so we have track scene. Then we're gonna have um, Fry either doing some sort of surveillance on Hot Shot or breaking up like a late night gambling um, party with these girls or something or something it has to be the scene where Fry catches this guy acting truly bad. Or he really needs to be so what if, charged or what if, asking. So okay, let's uh <clears throat> let's do this. They're at a gambling scene, right? Um and this guy, they've got like a, a waitress or whatever prostitute there, right? Mm -hmm. And the waitress messes up his drink, he's pissed off, and he hits her. Right. That would set him up as a bad guy. Um he's well, Right. What I what I what is in my head right now from this is that Fry is there. Maybe see something like that. But then he's getting complaints because this guy's up in a room with a whole bunch of girls, blowing money like he's a rock star. Fry goes and breaks up that party. Okay. Something like that. And, okay. he, and, he, and he's maybe he's being rough. One of them runs out crying. Maybe he gets there and she's got some sort of injury or something. This is where it's kind of that borderline is how how dark do you to make yeah make these types of scenes. So, so he's basically, you, you want to have him criminally charged, right? Or you want to have five, uh, Fry you, think something that I, I right. want to charge this guy. But the, obviously the company overrides everything. But, but if, and, and you're talking about a brothel. So these are prostitutes. Yeah. And they're going to, once the smoke clears, they're not going to want to be witnesses or, 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 or in, this, in this scene. So, so I would put, this scene would be um, uh, Fry breaks a big party. And one of the prostitutes was hit. Yeah. Let's just say that. Just just put that um, <clears throat> uh, the hotshot racer 
punches one of them or something. And we don't see that we in don't... the in the narrative because he comes in after the fact. But he you can see in, she's holding her face. She's crying. she's crying. He's not born yesterday. He knows that this guy has gone off the reservation. Now, in these books, a lot of times I kind of am, I don't really show all of that graphic stuff or what it means to live above a brothel because he finds himself in the first episode. He shows up and somebody's blown up his office and killed his predecessor. And the only place he can stay is above the mother load. And that sets up the saloon and, and all the girls and everything always being there. And so he has kind of a weird work work environment. Yeah. <clears throat> so, he, but he breaks his party. The, the victim or victims are crying. They, this guy has violated whatever rules they have of the mother load. Fry um, chests up with this guy. Maybe they fight. Maybe they don't. Probably not. It's too early. For that but it sets up a tense conference and this guy is going to basically say you can't touch me i'm hot shot racer everybody loves me okay and i'm going to pay these girls not to not to say what a jerk i am something okay. like that all right you can't touch me you can't touch me i'm untouchable da, 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 da. can't touch this so all that's right it. and that's all i got that's it okay story's, story's over dun, dun, dun. Okay. actually i do have one other thing um I, right when I, when I had to get a, leave my office this morning, I had Ad races the hot shot and wins, but, and then that's it. So that, that's my notes that I've started on this morning. Okay. So we there. need, so we need, um, the point of this story is to get this guy either off of Dark Landing. This guy's got to pay the price because he's a menace. So he's either going to go to jail or we're going to kick him off Dark Landing right. and make her see the truth about right. this dude, right? We're going to reveal him as loser. Right. So, um, and you want Fry to race, so we have to have a reason for Fry to race. Yeah. Um, could it, we need to decide what they're racing, because in the story so far I have, I have, there's some, some airships, there's obviously spaceships that come there. Well, what does this they guy race? Some, what is his specialty? Know. I was just thinking of as the hotshot speeder racer. Okay. So, since I don't really have, like, land speeders, like Star Wars land speeders, I'm thinking of something that has to be limited. So I'm thinking like, um, so you take uh, the horse race from the quiet man mm -hmm. and you combine that with the old barn burning biplanes that used to race through stuff like that. And so we'll do that with basically like a speeder race. They're going to be airships. So a flyer basically. It's going to be an air, an, a, a, not a spaceship, an airship, a terrestrial based ship. And the rules of the thing are you have to stay above, below a certain elevation and they're going to have to go through canyons and whatnot. So we'll just call it airship. Low low altitude airship race. And that's set up in earlier books where he takes an airship so we know he can fly one. Okay. So we need to we need to obviously we're gonna have to have a scene where Fry um oh we got one more character. Well let's let's come back to that. So let's so we have Fry and Shante and the unknown racer right now. So they have, they have, I'm, my notes I have, they have a big argument about yeah. after this. So this needs to go to Fry tries to convince Shante right. that this dude's no good. And, and he, always, he wants to charge him with battery here. He wants to let him have it. Yeah. Right. And Shante is the comp the company man. So she's the head, the, 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 CEO of Dark Landing. Her father's very powerful. She's under a lot of pressure to make this stuff work. Um, and so the, the main thing about Dark Landing, Dark Landing is a planet where they have resources, mining exotic resources, and that's all that matters to Dark Landing. Everything is the company. And then you have the, the native people, the un Ungloks and whatnot. So she's under enormous pressure to, to make this stuff work. And so you have the law, but the law is really more like what makes the company work. So Shante is extremely powerful in this book. And so this character here, he needs to have something something layered on that's not just he's an old boyfriend or girlfriend. So well, she, yeah, he's he's going to be from like a rich, because Shante's from a real powerful family. He went to the same private school. Oh, that's what you're looking for. Well, I was, I was going to say you could have him. So the racetrack or the racing mm -hmm. is kind of a good getaway for the miners. Like it's one of those morale oh, yeah. building things. Yeah. Like the and Coliseum. He's, he's like a really popular in oh, yeah. this in this circuit. And this this racing circuit could be not just on Dark Landing, but it's everywhere. Oh yeah. And maybe he's here as a special type of 
uh, exhibition race where they bring in uh, the right. company for whatever reason, brings in these guys, right. and they make a little bit of money because the miners pay to go watch. They bring in this guy as a star racer, right? Right. So that could be another reason why she doesn't want to charge him with a crime because the company is having this guy money. come out here to make money because he's here. Yeah. So, it, yeah, because it would be lots of high stake poker right. stuff. So the company that Shantae works for is the Sagittarian Conglomerate. Oh, look. It's called SAGCON. And then the kind of criminal underworld is. The shadow economy. Shadowcon. Okay. So I don't know if that matters. We can raise so that. So she, during their argument, she has to bring up uh, the company will never allow that. Right. Because she can make Hotshot Racer gone with the snap of her fingers. Right. But she's also looking out for herself and the right. company. And, and she's been, if you read the, the earlier stories, she's been making this work by funding it with her own money and she's pretty broke right now right so she's she's pulling all the stops to do this uh okay so we have three scenes set up now where we're setting up the initial conflict mm -hmm. um now we need to um let's and let's stay with this track and then we'll come back and do the the minor characters right. after so right um we get here um and then maybe we'll have us we have a um, we need to have a scene to set up why Fry, Fry is going to be in this race. So right. is it something where the racer and him have another conflict and the racer says, you know, uh, I'll race you. And if I lose, I'll leave. Right. I like that. And so we'll take that and we'll make it. That's a, we'll twist, give it a twist. Yeah. So um, Hotshot is going to challenge Fry. Okay. And where do we want to do this challenge? Do we want to have them? meet on the street or um is is well i got a perfect place for this okay okay because fry has uh, one of the themes is he he does all this kind of like functional fitness workouts where he's always working out and doing crazy stuff where he thinks he's nuts so he's he can be working out flipping tires and this guy comes sauntering on there with his six-pack abs and just being basically a big chunk because nobody likes guys with six-pack abs okay is the deputy gonna be there yeah, Mast is there, and Mast is practicing using his blaster in the corner, dry firing and whatnot, because he's just really not a very good marksman, and Fatty, or Fatty is Thad Fry is trying, to, That's trying good. to teach him that. That's good. And Maximus will be there. Is that the pig dog? That's the pig dog thing. Everybody loves Maximus. Um, pig dog. So another thing that we can do um, to layer this scene, is I... I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm a uh, I'm a huge character guy, and I like to layer scenes. Mm -hmm. If you can have like four things happen in one scene, that's a right. great scene, right? So what I'm thinking is, this is the this the point of this scene is the challenge. Everything else is just meat. Right. But if you can layer in the different things to make it a better scene, we can. Right. So you're talking about having uh, Sledge and is it Mast and whoever are dating, or is it Sledge and whoever are dating? Yeah, Sledge has a crush on Dixie, and she's kind of always brushing him off. Does Mast have anything going on where he... Mast is a deputy. He'll be with Fry at the uh, thing. But he doesn't have, like, I was... I he was doesn't have any love interest. Well, he does, but that's beyond the scope of this. Okay, well, uh, uh, then that won't help the scene to me. So we'll have Mast practicing. Uh, Fry's working out. Hot Shot shows up and kind of smirks at, uh, at Fry. Yeah, and I, I figure Hotshot will show up, and he'll because he's Hotshot is like an, a truly a, like Olympic class athlete. So he'll go up there and he'll do whatever Fry's doing. He's going to do it better, yeah. and then just shrug it off like it was nothing. Uh, and maybe he comes. He originally comes to say, "Hey, maybe we got off on the wrong foot." Right. Blah 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 blah. Try to make amends. Uh, or he's just walking uh, by because this this field is right by the mother load. As a matter of fact, Shante sometimes watches this from her window of her office. Okay. But anyway, he shows up. He casually goes up and just kind of makes Fry look like a dummy. And then Fry says, "Hey, I don't like you. Uh, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do everything I can to get you out of here, basically." And then Hotshot gives him the out of the race. Right. And then Hot, and maybe pokes his ego a little bit. Yeah. So then we need to have. Eventually, the race is going to happen down here. And Fry's gonna win, and then the the dude's right. gonna leave. But we need to have a couple other things here in the main story, right, to fill in the length of the book. Right. 
So what do you think? This will probably be a couple thousand words here. This will probably be a couple thousand words here because we need to establish. There might be more than one chapter. I don't know. We need to establish Fry and getting in there and then have the scene. Then obviously we're going to have the argument. And then we're going to have some build up things here and happen here. So maybe right now we're looking at, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand words for these four scenes. And we're going for twenty five thousand. So we're, we're going for thirty thousand. So, yeah. so we're not quite to halfway. Right. And these other things can fill in the, the gaps when we need them to. Um, so let, let's say right now we're looking at eight thousand words for the main storyline. Mm -hmm. And we want the main storyline to be at least at least 20,000 or 22,000 of the of the whole thing right, right right so what else do we have going on that we can layer in here and maybe make get this to go the length that we need it to okay. go but not bore anybody I, I think that so um maybe fry was going to realize that he has made a mistake that's what realize nobody can read it because it's blurry so it doesn't matter so right now, Fry accepts this challenge, and he's going to go, I can't beat this guy. So he's going to have to train. Well, let's, okay, so let's establish, let's do another scene for that. Right, let me draw it. Yeah. This is going to be another scene over here. It's like kind of like a bridge scene. Yeah, well, this could be another day. This guy is out practicing somewhere, mm -hmm. and Fry goes to practice, and he sees right. uh, Fry sees the complete awesomeness of that guy's shot. raw skill and he's just killing like oh my and God. he's like uh, i might what? have made a mistake yeah, this is gonna be ugly um and so that can be the mistake sees the kill sees awesomeness there you go awesome i can't spell on the whiteboard He's yes. awesome. Fry sees Hotshot is awesome okay. and unbeatable. So now this is where I get into thinking of plausibility. So everybody knows that he's like galactic champion racer. Fry is just uh, kind of a just a brave kind of former soldier who gets shit done. Right. Um, so how is he going to beat this guy realistically? Because it got to be plausible. All right. Let's figure that out. So we have the let's go. We have the race. So. What does Fry Fry's uh he he's not a pilot, he's a military dude and he's a cop. He can, he can fly. He's a part of ground forces, but he can fly an airship. He can he can fly spaceships. In one of those earlier sources, I could probably make it happen, but I wouldn't want to if I didn't have to. So what can Fry do as a person that will beat what he does? His his eraser. So his whole thing is I'm thinking about the race. We need to try fail with this. So. He needs a better ship, a better teacher, and I don't want to introduce a bunch of new characters. So he's going to have to practice, or maybe they have like a small race. Maybe he wins the race, but then there's like a final rematch. I don't know. Well, I was thinking, so we can either, we can have him practice, um, and and um, plausible, plausible, plausible. We can have him practice in a crappy ship, and then somebody shows up, and they're like, "Hey, fly this ship," mm -hmm. which is a better ship. But that's kind of an easy mode thing. I mm -hmm. I want to think of something that Fry can do during the race here's that what, he can win. Okay. Here's here's what I like for this too is so a lot of the dynamic here is a relationship between the native people, Ungox Mast mm -hmm. is his deputy, and Fry and that. So I would like maybe that um, he learns something that they have a different ship. Or somehow he gets an, an element, not the whole element, from Mast's something. And Mast's a little bit outcast to because he's a geek. Okay, great he's idea. Geek. So the Unglocks and Mast, don't they live underground? They, they, the Unglocks like to live underground. They, they know do, all yeah. this stuff. So some of the terrain of the some of the terrain of the race is gonna be in the canyons. Mm -hmm. It could, could be a tunnel, it could be a series of tunnels. Right. And and maybe in the race. There's not a whole lot of rules for course. You're supposed to stay on this deal, and they have right. some checkpoints that you got to get to. But one of the things could be the tunnels, and the right. tunnels are marked. But what if there's a shortcut that only Mass knows about? Mass is a shortcut, and he hasn't actually raced. He he, the hot the hot shot 
is Galactic Champion, but he's never raced on Ungulook, which is their planet. Yeah. So that makes it more plausible that maybe this guy has a has an Achilles heel that can be exploited if Fry is not too proud to listen to his friend. So uh, let's see. There's a shortcut in the race, um, and underground or semi underground. I think they'll fly underground on yeah. some of this. Semi underground. Okay, so Fry can he sees the hotness right, mm -hmm. and then Mast and Fry go. Is it are they two seater flyers or just one? Well, for the race, I mean, he obviously is going to fly one seater. Yeah, but so I'm assuming it's going to be maybe he has a. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be one seater for the race. It's going to be one seaters or small. Okay, so now we have a, a different scene where Fry is looking over the race. Checks, uh, checks the race course. He, he's either he's either looking at it like like he's looking at a map for it, mm -hmm. because if he's looking at his map, and then he comes in and he was like, "Oh, I know this There's place." There's a bunch of map that's kind of just like a little bit of a blank spot. Yeah, in the, in the map that everybody gets the race map. Uh, so we have Fry looking over map, mm -hmm. and then Mast comes in and sees it. It's incomplete. Right. And he gets excited because he knows that area or knows somebody knows it or something. Right. Uh, and then tells shortcut. And Fry is not really, he's not really, oh, I don't know about the shortcut. Right. And I want him to tr look at the shortcut or try the shortcut or something where he's like, yeah, there's a shortcut, but it's like almost impossible to fly through it. So then like, we, so, okay. So, so that then, makes it it's not just a given. He's still got to work for it. So then he went, maybe he goes out to fly it. Right. And as he's, his ship. as he's flying, he wrecks his ship and realizes, no, this is not good enough. Right. Flies. Shortcut. Rex. No effing way. This is impossible. Thanks for nothing, <laughs> Matt. Okay, so then he's got to get a new ship and race and yeah. then during the race he's got to get so far behind that he's like i have no other choice but try to shortcut. try the shortcut gotta, gotta try it so where does he get a new ship from <clears throat> did he need the sledger dixie do they know anybody with ships well yeah i mean maybe he considers going to shantae but they're they're on the outs um dixie has lots of secret resources mass we've already used him too much yeah people um Sledge is a cool character. I want to use Sledge. So maybe um, well, he goes to ask Dixie, Dixie for help, and then we can bring Dixie and Sledge into there somehow. So Fry goes to Dixie. What's who? And Dixie is the, the she's a madam, the madam. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's got a lot of a lot of background. Cause she she's got her own little financial empire, but it's a spoiler, so I can't I can't. It's not related to the number one. Okay. So. <clears throat> So is it something where everybody knows that he's going to race, right. and after he wrecks, he goes back to the mother load? Does he? Is he at the bar, kind of nursing his yeah. wounds, or we could use uh, PC Dickles is with a mining foreman. Maybe he has access to some equipment. He's in in most of the other episodes too. Okay. So how do we connect Fry and PC? Uh, PC or his miners. Actually, PC has been trying to get make himself take a vacation because he never leaves the mine. So maybe he's at the mother load, or some of those people. Somehow they can meet up at the mother load, okay, and work this out. So we're going to be at the bar, right? And um, Fry and Master are, are talking about the the race and. Mm -hmm. Somebody overhears them say something that, that it doesn't matter anymore yeah, I because, I, I because I, my ship's right. gone, right? right? So PC overhears this while right. he's walking by or whatever. Or, feels... or he says, hey, I hear about the race. Good luck. And the sh and, and Fry's like, well, it doesn't matter anyway. I wrecked maybe, my ship. Yeah, maybe he's made a huge bet. And now he's going to realize, oh, my God, I'm going to lose all this money I put on this bet because Fry, who he doesn't really like a lot anyway, is going to fall through. So he's like, okay. I don't like you, but I bet a lot of money on you winning because I don't like this hot shot. And so now I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you shipped and I'll hobble something together. 
what if you said he, he doesn't like the unknown racer, but if he is doesn't really like Fry, mm -hmm. what happens if he bet against Fry? But it doesn't matter because if he Fry doesn't race, That's then good. he doesn't get paid. I like that. So he right. bet against Fry, but the race is off if Fry can't get a ship. So he's gonna help him get a ship, and he's gonna get him like the worst ship in the world. Right. He's gonna well, not the worst ship, but like definitely not a good one. A fixer upper. Yeah. And he says, I've got a ship you can use. Mm -hmm. Here you uh, go. Have fun with that. PC has a ship. Or parts of ships. Or maybe he has, he has a ship, but not all in one. Not a fixer all at one time. It's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> you can combine these three partial ships to get one full ship. And But at the bar scene, though, we, we can't let it slide that PC has a bet against Fry. So we want PC to come off as just wanting to be a helpful dude to help yeah. out Fry. I can work that in someplace where, like, you know, why are you? I mean, I think I can work that in actually in the dialogue. He's like, well, why are you helping me? I know you don't like me. He's like, well, you got you got a race. I mean, I think I can work that in, yeah. or I can put in a little scene someplace. Well, and you because I mean, you want it later to come out after, like, in the in the ending, you want it later to be PC's pissed off because he lost a whole bunch of money. Right. So you don't want to give that and, up. And, in and this there could scene. be some tension in this scene because. Fry's like, so basically you're betting against me, but you want me to use this ship you're building for me. I don't see this as a great deal for me, but yeah. it's my only hope. Right. Or my only choice, or whatever. Yeah, I, st I think you should still leave it out, the bet part, until yeah, later. That to uh, but part. yeah. So then he gets the rickety deal. They go, uh, and this can even be here. They go and see it. And he's like, oh, this is not going to be any good. See? My ship. The is terrible. ship. Okay. So then we get to the race, and they show up, and mm -hmm. uh, they're all lining up, and uh, they. And I'm thinking maybe I'll just do. What, what do you think about this? Just a one-on-one -on -one race rather than a whole bunch of people. Either way, that's fine. Or I could. I'll, I'll, that's a small detail. You can do. We can do. I mean, you could. And that way, it makes it a little bit yeah. more. It just depends. I'm trying to think about whether I want to spend time dealing with all these other characters and racers, but I can decide that way. Even if even if it's not just between them, you don't have to make them a big thing. Say it's like a head of the pack. Yeah, Behind just the pack. say they, when they show up, when Fry's there, he lines his ship up with the other six racers, and uh, and uh, Hot Shot gets out of his racer because they're I mean they're getting geared up right, so they they don't have to be sitting in the thing. Um, Hotshot sees him and he comes over and he chuckles at his ship and it's like, are you serious? I wouldn't mind two of Dixie's girls racing this race, so maybe I'll work that in. Okay. Yes, they, there are some earlier characters that might be fun. Yeah. That so good. that we could we could actually we could we could add her racers and talking about her racers into this scene too. Right. To, and because Dixie is going to be at the bar obviously and she's talking to them and maybe that's what PC overhears is Dixie talking to hey, fry about her i got a great scene because the girls all kind of like sledge even though he's a big neanderthal so i got a scene in my head popped up right now where when they get to the actual race their his girls are gonna have this awesome ship and sledge you say well i put that together for him i do that all the time and he's like why didn't you tell me you could do that <laughs> i think it would be a funny scene i might write that okay so we have uh, dixie's girls dixie's girls sledge scene, uh, sledge ship Builds right, built builds. ships, built their ship, right? And that'll be fine. And, and we'll then we'll put uh, Dixie in this scene as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Dixie's girls are racing, right? Okay, so uh, this, um, so we can have Sledge and Shante and maybe even Mast sitting together watching the race, and this can be brought up. Shantae and, and Sledge talking right. about it. So right. uh, Shantae was like, can you believe that thing? And where did those girls get that? And Sledge was like, well, I built that for them. <laughs> yeah. And then Mass was like, well, why didn't you tell us that before? Because it's been much really helpful. Yeah. Much really the key part. Right. So uh, this scene will be Shantae, Sledge, and Mast. Um, okay. So then we're going to have the actual race, and uh, Fry's going to be behind most of the time. Yep. 
Uh, and then he's going to take the shortcut. Forced to take shortcut. Right. Um, what else do we want in the race to... Uh... Oh, Is this maybe... a violent race where people can get hurt? Yeah, I mean, that's those are all details. Um, we can have some people... Well, because if they're no, racing, then then Fry could see like one of Ditsy girls, if if if, uh, if Hotshot knocks her out of the way and she like crashes, mm -hmm. is that something that happens in the races? They could do that because well, because we forgot that that he was uh, Jerky McJerkface to these girls. So maybe these girls are actually maybe they're they they come across as being kind of like you know the flighty, cute, stereotypical, but really they want they're there to take him out. So, so maybe they try to ram him or something. I don't know. I have to think about that. So you think that maybe Dixie tells the girls, hey, you know he roughed that other chick up. Mm -hmm. Do the same to her, and the girls are purposely yeah. trying to take well, him out? Maybe we'll leave that as, as a maybe. So okay. people watch this video won't have all the spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> if they watch it. Um yeah. So we need to so, have we need to have like a crash scene in here where Fry sees somebody's crashing and that kind of ups the ante a little bit. Oh, that's that's let's do that. Let's do uh, uh, we'll call them just DG for Dixie's Girls. Yep. Um, they try they're gonna try to take Dixie's Girls versus Hot Shot Crash. So maybe they try to take him out or at least make him lose if not outright kill him. But they try to, and then this guy being the galactic champion is able to get the better on him, on them, and they wipe out. Okay. All right. They wreck, and he sees that somehow. Uh, well, Fry could be right behind him when right. it happens, and you know they're all flying or maybe in the same Fry, area, or maybe Fry's ahead for once, and he sees that and he circles back, and then he gets even further back. He's trying to do the right thing, and it just fucks up his whole race, and then um, he has to go. Yeah, I don't know. say say he's with the pack. Yep, so Fry circles back. And he and he's with the pack and he circles back to see if she's okay. And he sees that she's okay. Uh and then he Falls gets back behind. in the race, and that's why he has to take the shortcut right, to love that, it. That's freaking awesome. Best plot twist ever. <clears throat> so he wins the race. And so at the end of at at um we need to have the the Final confrontation scene between the the hotshot and Fry, and that could that be at the finish line? And Fry says something about, "Hey, I got your plane ticket right here," or, or something like that, mm -hmm. where you can do that. I'm thinking, I got ideas of percolating. I like the idea of hotshot coming back into the saloon with his old swagger, and he's going to have another party. Where's our party at? But he gets basically denied on all fronts. The girl deny him. Dixie denies him. He gets chesty with gets chest up to Thad. Thad either puts him in his place verbally or physically, and shoots him off the off the planet. Because he's kind of get, getting to get his due more more than just losing the race. It shows it it'll illustrate that he's thoroughly defeated. Uh, denied service. Yep. And. Um... Fry comes with his ticket to yeah. to say you got to go. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and obviously with with this thing, we're we're only really looking at the major major plot right. points. There's lots of little stuff. Um, so, I mean, right now you can look at it and say from this little it's kind of backwards. So you have. The establishing uh, idea, this is the promise of the story, right? The word, right. It's going to be a race. Set up. And then we set the tension higher. Ratchet um, it up. Then uh, Shantae won't do what Fry wants. What's at stake? Um, then we have the challenge set forth by the Hot Shot. The first door where you got to commit to the story. Then uh, Fry's like, hell yeah, I'll do it. And then he sees, Fry sees... Uh, hot shots, super awesome flight, and he's like, this, All hope is lost. This is a bad idea. Yep. Uh, he gets some hope as he's looking over the map, and then Mass, uh, being from the planet and knowing the terrain, draws out a shortcut for the, him. The secret talisman given to the hero. Secret talisman. Save. So then he flies it, 
realizes that it sucks, wrecks, and that sets us, that's the try fail cycle where right. he's like, oh, I failed now. We're at the bar. Um, Dixie's talking about her girls racing. Last ditch plan. Uh, PC hooks him up with a fighter, uh, with a flyer. It's a fixture upper because unbeknownst to our main character, PC has bet against him. So he doesn't want to be out of his money. So Fry gets a fighter. Then they get to the race day and we see Shantae Sledge and Mast all sitting on mm -hmm. the bleachers talking about the race, looking at the different flyers. And how awesome the, the Dixie's girls' cars are. And how, are, and how uh, crappy Fry's, we have to put in too, that they're looking at Fry's ship and his Fry's, What a joker. Fry's ship is junk. a junk. -er. Okay. So uh, then somebody says something like, if he pulls this out, he's a miracle or something like that. Right. right? Like, yeah, no, the odds are being even more. Ryan gets his favor. So then the, the race starts. We're going to have to have a scene between Hotshot and Fry. Uh, just like a final, um, a final, well, you're going down. Right. Um, scene. Trash um, talk. Of uh, final Hotshot trash, uh, trash talk, yeah. Final trash. Trash talk. Then the race. And uh, he's actually keeping up fairly well, even if, even though it's a crappy deal. Uh, one of the Dixie girls are both trying to take out Hotshot, and Fry is watching this, uh, seeing as they race that the, the girls are trying to take him out in some fashion. Um, they miss, and she crashes, and he turns around to go to make sure she's okay because he's a uh, whatever. You got thought. I do. I think that they have to be. I think it has to be two people in the cockpit because all the, the Dixie girls would be in the same ship. Okay. And then um, maybe Mast and. Fry can be in a ship, or Mast, or maybe, I'm sorry, or maybe Fry takes the dog with him. Because earlier I was thinking I want him in the cockpit because he has some funny things he does when he's riding the shotgun. So I can work that out, and then maybe the, the hot shot. I don't really want to make a new character for his. I could, if he has a sidekick. Yeah. Or I could just say he's so arrogant he doesn't need me to. So great idea about the two seaters. So they're two seaters. Right. Because that give me that way I don't have to just describe flying. I can have some dialogue between the two people in the thing, and you can have some people, you know, crapping their proverbial pants as we go through the, these high speed turns. And it, and it, and it, I, I like the uh, pig dog being in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. The re the way that we can make that because if it's a two seater cockpit and uh, and and Mass knows the layout, it would be illogical for Mass not to ride with them unless Mass hates flying. Mass well, Mass is seven feet tall, so he can't fit in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. But we could also be that he doesn't he, like flying. He could, yeah, he could not like flying, and he's he's a little bit kind of a cerebral kind of geeky guy for for an unglock. But, but uh, that would but put, this, that would this ship him. is going to be a human ship because PC is dimming it, so mass is not going to fit very well. But the pig dog will fit. Okay. Okay. So mass can't fit. Pig dog will. So whatever. So Fry's going to take his pig dog for good luck, just because. I'm going to put a note here for sidekick because he may have to have like a sidekick. So then uh, they race, Fry wins through the shortcut, um, and you can have a little like pig dog squealing as they're flying <laughs> through these caves oh. and the pigs freaking out. Mm -hmm. Then they return, then they win, um, and there's a whole bunch of cheering at the finish line. The final complete defeat of the, of the bad guy. I think we do need to have a finish line like a uh, congratulatory scene. Right. Congrats. Then they return to the bar, and they have the final confrontation between the two, and then he leaves. And this, so this is the whole main arc, but thrown in here, you can yeah. add in a little bit of filler, not filler, but yeah. subplot, uh, and kind of build up the rest. I mean, you can even have a scene where uh, PC takes Fry to the ship, and they see that it's a clunker. Right. So let's take a picture. Here. So that's what I like doing when I'm plotting. I like to uh, to find out what's the what's the main thing that we're dealing with, and figure out logically how we can work that out. Some of this isn't strictly logical. Some of it is just right. fun. Uh, some of it fits the story. Right. But I I think I think what you have here is a a really good bare bones 
uh, knowing, knowing the characters, I can see what they would do in these and where they're going to shine and do things that are kind of high suspense or funny. Because I always the funny stuff as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this, has got, this is awesome. This is a great, I'm really excited about writing this story. And I think doing it this way rather than just sitting down and straight pantsing it, like, um, for instance, when we first started, your, your only idea at the beginning was there's going to be a race. There's going to be a race. Uh, but why? And so they, I, and these guys don't like each other. Yeah. yeah. But but so taking that and kind of making that the overarching mm -hmm. deal, and then walking through this, you can kind of see where you take your uh, one idea. You don't know why you have that idea, right. but you take that idea and you you grow it into mm -hmm. a deal. It's why I like my whiteboard. Uh, it's also why I like writing on paper because you can do this on paper, and it's not on the computer. It's not set in stone, so you can change things and. Uh, so anyway, yep, uh, any, any final words or thoughts? No. So uh, first, I hope everybody likes it. I hope that one, the sound quality is good. I hope uh, people get some value out of it. This has been, Josh and I talk about, we talk about writing all the time. We're always doing this, but this is the first time we've sat down and worked on a story in this way. Now we did work on the story for um, a few credits more. Yep. And that was a different process because yep. we, we outlined our stories. We had a spreadsheet. We had characters and common themes, and then we kind of wrote the story. And those stories, uh, mine was called Boss. Yep. And yours was called uh, what was mine? Because they changed, they made you change yours because yours was Leverage. It was called Leverage. Leverage. And those are two stories that interwove together. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. In writing, so that's a different process. But this is this is the first time we've gone and done that. And if people of Keystroke Medium like it, then we'll do some things more. It's it's kind of a hybrid. Uh, we we talk about the yes and method. This wasn't right. technically yes and, but it probably it, it pretty right. much was. It kind of was. Um, yeah. So so uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, we may do more, um, you know, in the future if we are able to do our our collaborative fantasy project. Then maybe we'll do a lot of these while we're talking That's about awesome. different yeah. things. So uh, we're gonna try to take. We're, Scott already took a screenshot. Um, because I know you guys can't read really what we wrote here on the video. It's kind of fuzzy. Mm -hmm. So I apologize about that. But uh, when we share this we'll, on Facebook in the group, we'll, uh, we'll uh, add the screenshot right. so you can kind of see what we wrote down, if you can read our mm -hmm. handwriting. And, uh, and then you can expect to see this book. And uh, let's see. I can't do the math. Oh, I, I have it written down. Four so rounds of 18 days. Book three is the end of this month. So... Um... Four and five, which are both done, will be uh, in February, six, early March. March, so um, April, maybe. So this should be should be here in the March or April or something like that. They come very quickly. Um, you don't have to, with this story. Once I get, I, I will write it so that it is this should be a standalone episode. You obviously get a lot out of it if you um, read the rest of the series, but you don't have to. You can just read this one if you it just says see how this turned out. And what you should do is once the story comes out, come back to this video see and, and see how it changed and then leave us your thoughts on uh, how the outline turned into the actual draft. Yeah. And, and let us know what you thought about our drafting process. If you thought it was stupid or whatever, or outlining process. Yeah. I had a good time. That was a blast, man. So, all right. Well, we'll see you guys uh, next week on Monday's show and hope you guys have a great week. See ya. See you later. I'll just stand, stand there and like, turn it off. Wait for it. There you go.